what I meant about the diary, it's, it's really a diary. Uh, I'm trying to uh, say things that are important to me, mostly. Not necessarily for the public, but I try to talk as simple as possible to explain uh, a lot of the winemaking processes, too. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of enjoyed that, and it gets a little crazy at times. That's fine. And, and you're still doing it today? Oh, yeah. Okay. I will definitely do a diary today about what we did, what we're doing now. We're, we're right now. You can hear the noise. We're bringing in grapes for mm -hmm. uh, Pinot Noir. We're doing our sparkling. Right, right. So. You have an interesting tasting room here with all these. Uh, you're, you're obviously a Raiders fan. Unfortunately, in <laughs> 1967, I got hooked on the Raiders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they were pretty good there. Right. For right. a while. So what do we have here for wines today, David? Um, let's see. What we have here is Block 4. That's where we were out in the vineyard. We were talking about the different varieties growing oh, right. in that one area. Okay. So this is the wine made from that area. All right. And then uh, we got Petit Syrah, which um, we uh, bought uh, vines and planted a whole area of Petit Syrah. It's one of my favorite wines. Mm -hmm. And then over here we have some actually some Zinfandel from... Um, from other uh, vineyards right around here. In 2010, we had a very small crop, so we had to go out and buy grapes for a change. Okay, can we sample some of these, and then can you tell us a little bit of the background in terms of the winemaking process for them? Yeah, um, this is block four, that's the one we should definitely okay. do. Is that a red blend? Yeah, well, it's okay. from all those uh, varieties out in the vineyard, so what we do is we harvest it, and then um, it's fermented all together. Mm -hmm. So okay, and so you, you actually don't know the percentages of grapes in here. It's just no. It's Every a, year it's the different. True field blend. I do point out here what I think the main ones are. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, yeah, it's mostly it's probably about fifty percent zin, but it's got the um, you know the the three different. Uh, Components of Petit Syrah, including Petit Syrah, Syrah, and Palerson. Right. In it. Got it. So the, it's those, very complex. It's got a lot of spicy character. I can definitely taste the spice. I can de definitely taste the Zinfandel influence. And there are certain grapes you're sure in here, and other grapes just kind of fall in because they happen to be picked yes. in the mix. There are a few uh, white var varieties out there, but we don't uh, pick those. Right. Got it. Okay. So let's move on to the next wine here. Petit Syrah is. Um, Again, like I said, is one of my favorites. Um, it's hard to drink a whole bottle of Petit Syrah, especially if you have a lot of, um, of course, um, tannin in it. Mm -hmm. This one's probably starting to smooth out. It's 2009. Um, oh, in the uh, Block 4, what vintage is that? Uh, this is 2010. It's a really okay. difficult year. This wine will take probably another 10 years to really develop fully. Oh, it's amazing. All the acid in 2010. So, so Petit Syrah is going to be more one-dimensional, but it's got a lot of uh, character to it. I think a lot of spice. And mm -hmm. To me, it's um, one of my favorites. Um, we made years ago, We um, when I first started, I, I, I did well with a wine we call a steak cuvee. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, what I think is grows the best out in the vineyard here, which is Zinfandel. Um, uh, Cabernet mm -hmm. uh, and Petit Syrah. Right. And Got Carignan, it. actually. It's Carignan's in that wine, too. By the way, this is definitely uh, smoothing out somewhat. It, yeah. It's not as yeah. intense as I yeah. would have expected. Yeah, I but, but it definitely can last for quite a while. I mean, Petit yeah. Syrah has a pretty strong structure so that it um, yeah. can go for many years. Okay, and then this third wine? Uh, this third wine, actually, it says Neighbors. I'm assuming this is probably from, um, we bought some grapes from uh, Mounts. Which oh, is yes, great. Mounts Family Vineyard. Very, yes. They're really doing a great job. Mm -hmm. They're making a Petit Syrah, I think, uh, similar to ours. And uh, so they do sell Zinfandel, too. So we, this one, actually, is probably some Petit Syrah from them, I think. Mm -hmm. And some Zinfandel from down the road a little further. Okay. Again, we couldn't... Um, we couldn't get enough um, grapes from our vineyard that year in 2010, so we had to buy some. So this is going to be interesting. It's got some good color because it's got 25% on Mounts Petit Syrah in it. Mm -hmm. Neighbors is in. Okay. From Neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> I see that you have, um, on, on this one, well, on two of these, you have um, the aging information right in a little red label right here. 
What, what, what made you do that? Well, originally all our wines until a few years ago were aged only 10 months, including Cabernet. Okay. I actually love 10 month aged Cabernet. Mm hmm. Okay. You know, we can put an oak in it, you know, but it's still, it's got so much more intensity than something that's been uh, aged longer. Also, we don't do any uh, extended maceration, so we press early. Uh, you're going to get a lot of fruit in the wines. It's not everybody's style. And so then Matt and I, well, Matt mostly, <laughs> he's my assistant here, mm -hmm. he decided he wanted to try to age some a little longer, and um, we've been kind of interested, so we're trying to do what everybody else does now. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> but I love oak, but I just think it's cheating, you know. Yeah, and, and speaking to that a little bit, what is the David Cafaro style? Because you just said 10 months or so in the oak. Yeah. But in I, general, what's, what are you looking for when, you, when you're working with wine? I want to taste the fruit. Okay. okay. Uh, That's your number uh, there's one. No, there's no um, residual sugar left in the wines. I want to make sure it's dry. But I want, uh, I like around 15% alcohol. So I want the character, you know, the, the intensity to be there. We usually pick and then uh, we can... Uh, try to adjust it to uh, around 15%. Mm -hmm. We actually have an instrument over there, it's called an alkalizer, and we can do uh, alcohols while it's still fermenting. So we can actually, Zinfandel is really a problem. Once you start fermenting, it starts uh, getting really intense uh, sugar all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be careful. Okay, and um, lastly, one of the things I wanna talk to you about is um, the availability of your wine. When I first heard about you many years ago, back in like 98 is when I first expo was exposed to your wines, yeah. they were really hard to get. I mean, you, you, right. had, you were selling out immediately and you had allocations and you had futures that you were doing. How is that program going nowadays? How can people get your wine and, and is it difficult you to get can them? Still, you can still buy futures. We're selling futures for 2012, which is growing out there. Okay. We're also selling futures for 2011. We're aging the extra six months, 16 months instead of 10. Mm -hmm. So you can get futures all you want still. Got it. Okay. Wonderful. Um, David, it's been a wonderful morning uh, with you, and thank you for your time. Okay. Well, thanks for coming. Okay, great. It's been a lot of fun. Now we've got to make some wine.